In this video, we're going to take a look at the SanDisk Professional G40 Thunderbolt 3 SSD. These are some of the fastest external SSDs that you can use on a Mac computer, and they're fantastic if you want to do a lot of video editing and photo editing, and you're trying to get more performance out of your computer without paying for the expensive SSD upgrades that Apple offers. The Pro G40 is designed for sustained high-speed performance, and it has a cooling aluminum core. The outside of it has this rubberized, rugged feeling too. The USB-C connector supports both Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C. The enclosure has an IP rating of 68, and it gives you up to 4,000 pounds of crush resistance, and it states up to three meters of drop resistance. So this should be a really durable hard drive, and SanDisk backs it up with a five-year warranty. SanDisk includes a short Thunderbolt 3 cable that seems to be the perfect length for using this on a desktop. But depending on what your computer setup is like, or if you're using a Mac Studio or a Mac Mini and you're trying to plug this into the back, you might get a little annoyed with how short this cable is. I was really happy with the speed test because I got super close to what the advertised speeds on the box were. Not all the way there, but you almost never get exactly what the advertised speeds are because they call those the maximum speeds if all the conditions are just right. The Pro G40 is quite a bit faster than the Extreme and Extreme Pro portable SSDs. Even if you get the Extreme Pro SSD, on a Mac at least you're still going to be limited to about 850 megabytes per second read and write because they don't support the USB 3.2 faster speeds that the Extreme Pro supports. These are some of SanDisk's most expensive external SSDs and it's because they use Thunderbolt instead of USB 3.2. Now USB 3.2 likes to advertise a ton of really fast speeds, like some of the drives say they can hit up to 2000 megabytes per second but you're never going to hit that on a MacBook because the newest Macs use Thunderbolt 4. If you're using a USB device with the Apple ports, they actually are using the Thunderbolt adaptation of USB 3.2, which is not able to support the dual lane tunneling that USB 3.2 can actually support these days. So you're almost always going to have slower disk speeds if you choose to use an SSD that uses the USB 3.2 standard. It is a little bit confusing because Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3, USB 3.2 all use the USB-C type connector, but the standard that the drives are using and the actual cables are quite a bit different. This drive advertises a maximum of 3000 megabytes per second read and 2500 on the right side, and I was able to get really close to these speeds when I was doing a disk test. By comparison, the MacBook hard drives, usually I get around 5000 megabytes per second, so they're not quite as fast as your built-in computer hard drive, but these are still going to be really great for using editing videos, photos, as a way to make your computer have a bigger storage capacity. Now the reason I bought this drive is because I have a one terabyte computer and I find myself often filling it up, but I'm still working on a project and I'm not ready to offload all the files yet. So I can easily put my Final Cut Pro library on this hard drive and edit directly off of it without experiencing any computer slowdowns. If you use one of the SanDisk Extreme or Extreme Pro drives, you're going to hit around 850 megabytes per second read and write using a MacBook, which is pretty fast, but you really want the fastest speed possible when you're doing video editing so that the playback experiences that you're exporting and your rendering goes as fast as possible. And when I've been using this Pro G40 drive, I've had no issues at all with it feeling slow or sluggish. My export times are just as fast as they were using my MacBook and I don't experience any performance issues when editing in Final Cut Pro. I've been really happy with this hard drive, editing my whole Final Cut library directly off of it. This drive is available in both one, two, and four terabytes, and the prices tend to vary a lot depending on what sales are running. But at the end of the day, buying one of these is a whole lot cheaper than selling your MacBook Pro to buy one that has a built-in two terabyte, four terabyte, or eight terabyte hard drive straight from Apple. Those SSD upgrades can get very pricey, and the built-in SSDs are definitely faster than this one, but this is a way to get almost the same amount of performance at a much cheaper price. So buying one of these can prolong the life of your computer once you find yourself needing more space to work with to do big video projects. You can also build your own portable SSDs by buying an NVMe drive and an enclosure, but a lot of times these have issues with heat, which can greatly affect your performance over a sustained amount of time. But I haven't had any issues with the Pro G40 slowing down over time or building up any heat. It seems to dissipate the heat really well. Another great thing about this hard drive is it's fully backwards compatible with USB 3.2. So if your computer doesn't use Thunderbolt, or if you're using it on someone else's computer and all that they have available is a USB 3.2 port, 
this is still gonna function really well. Just note that this hard drive comes pre-formatted in APFS, so it will only work with Apple computers out of the box. So if you wanna use it with a Windows computer, you need to reformat it into something like XFAT so you can use it with both Windows and Mac. But APFS is gonna give you the fastest speeds when you're using it with Apple products. So I would buy the SanDisk Pro G40 Thunderbolt 3 external SSD if you spend a lot of time moving files back and forth or if you're working with a lot of big video projects that have tons of clips, very large libraries and files in Final Cut or Premiere or any of the other different software types because this is gonna give you the best editing performance possible without having to go out and buy a new computer with a bigger SSD that's built in. I have links to purchase this drive in the description below. If you have any other questions or comments about this drive, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.